Is the way that you price and pitch your services actually blocking you from charging higher prices? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up your prices and pitch your services. So let's get to it. Hey, and welcome to Music Space, where we help working musicians just like you learn how to quickly and easily make a living with your craft. So if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. So this video is going to be broken down into two parts. And in the first part, I'm going to talk about the two ways that people normally do their prices, namely the sort of set rate and flat rate versus the variable rate. And in the second part, I'm going to give you three really powerful ways to determine your prices and pitch your prices to potential customers. So make sure you stick around to the end. So one of the biggest mistakes that we make when we're trying to determine our prices is we ask around to other people in the industry. So we, you know, contact and ask other musicians and artists, Hey, what are you getting paid and all of this kind of stuff. And then we usually take the highest ranges and the lowest ranges and sort of put our prices somewhere in the middle or the average of those prices. But the problem with this is all you're really doing is setting your prices based on a status quo and based on what other people are making rather than your own value. So of course you end up not really being able to determine your own prices because in a way it's already determined for you by that status quo. And another huge mistake that you make when you're trying to set your prices is not having a predetermined set price. A question that comes up all the time when talking about money and pricing is, should I have a set rate or a flat rate that I charge? Or should I do this sort of variable rate where it's a, let me see what their budget is first and then charge them based off that. And usually the reason behind this whole variable rate thing, let me see what their budget is first before I charge them or tell them a price is based on the fear of missing out. It's based on the fear of not getting the gig or losing the gig or losing money. But not only is this causing you to look unprofessional, it's actually also causing you to lose out on money. Just think about it for a second. How many professional service based businesses do you know that do this variable rate thing? You hire a lawn service or a landscaping service to cut your grass, flat rate, set price. You hire a cleaning service to come in and clean your home, it's a set price, flat rate. Want a service to come out and mount your flat screen TV on your wall? It's a set price, flat rate. Need to get a haircut or a shave from the barber? Set price, flat rate. Hell, even hookers and the dope man have set prices and flat rates, or you know, some of my friends tell me. But seriously, this is how professional service-based businesses set up their pricing. And that's what you are as an artist, as a band. You're professional service-based businesses. You service clients by providing them music, you know, for their, you know, events and entertainment or their club or whatever. But this is what you do. So now that you know that set rates and flat prices is the way to go if you want to be viewed as professional, let me give you three really powerful ways to determine your prices and pitch your prices to potential customers. And before we move on, if you're getting value out of this video so far, and I know you are, do me a quick favor and subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on this video. Go ahead and do that now. That helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps the channel stay relevant on YouTube. And it lets me know that you really appreciate the content and it lets me know the type of content I need to make for you in the future. Now, the first way to do this is determine your value proposition. Now, essentially what this is, is a pitch that explains all of the benefits that you offer and it explains how you solve issues for your potential clients. So specifically, it's a list of things that you have that are considered valuable that you can use to, you know, determine your prices and pitch your services. So things like education and experiences, you know, how long you've been in the game, what you bring to the table. Do you or your band have state of the art sound equipment or instruments? Do you have a lead vocalist that was a finalist on American Idol or on The Voice? Do you or any of your band members or your band as a collective have a huge social media following that you can post up to that helps get the word out about particular events? These are all things that go under the umbrella of your value proposition. You see how all of these things that I name are valuable things that potential clients are going to want to know about and potential clients are going to see as valuable. And it can be really simple things as well. For example, I played with a band whose drummer had those cardboard kick drum, you know, logos thing on the back of their, or on the front of their kick drum. And what they would do is they would print a logo for the businesses or the services that they would be playing for. 
So if they were playing for a wedding, they would have the couple's names on the bass drum. Or if they were playing for a club or something like that, they would have the club's name and the club logo on the bass drum. And it was really cool because something as simple as this is the thing that they pitched for their band and people in clubs and venues bought into it. They thought it was the coolest thing in the world to have their logo on a bass drum of a band that's on stage that's playing for them. And again, all of this is under the umbrella of the value proposition. And the more things that you have that are like this and the more things that you can name and set a value to, the higher prices that you can charge and the more you can pitch your services. This is the equivalent of what you see that Apple and Samsung does with their phones every year. You ever see those presentations when they're getting ready to release a new phone? They spend 30 minutes to an hour listing all of these benefits of this new phone, even the smaller things. And they do this because they understand that listing these things in that way creates a perception of value in the mind of the customer. They tell you about the new state-of-the-art chipset and the faster processor. They tell you about the detailed color display on the screen and the screen size and how much RAM the phone has. They tell you about all of these new camera features and on and on and on. And then at the end of the presentation, they say you get all of this stuff, all of these things that we listed for only 1200 bucks. What they've done is they've listed all of these things and they've justified the cost. So when they say the cost of $1,200, you're like, oh my God, that's like such value. I get all of this new stuff, all of these new things for, you know, a reasonable price of 1200 bucks. This is what your value proposition is. And this is how you determine your prices and pitch your services. Now, the next way to determine your prices and pitch them is to come up with your unique selling proposition or your USP. Now off top, there are a lot of similarities between the unique selling proposition and the value proposition, but there are some subtle differences that are really important that you should know. The unique selling proposition is the thing or things that specifically make you different from other people like you. So the things that make you different from other artists, other musicians, and other bands. And again, that does include some of the things from the value proposition, but this is sort of the headline, sort of the main things that you focus on, the main two or three things that make you different, like your biggest features that make you different from other bands and artists. So using the Apple and Samsung as an example, again, one of the things that they do to set themselves apart from each other is they use the camera. So since cameras are the biggest, like most sought after features on phones now, both of these companies use that to their advantage. So when Samsung is getting ready to release the phone, they'll say, well, our camera has, you know, three lenses. One of them is a zoom lens. One of them is a, you know, a, you know, whatever kind of lens. And the other one does this and they focus on this a lot. And of course, when Apple releases their phones later in the year, they'll come out and say, well, our phone has, you know, four lenses, a lens that can do this and a lens that can do that and so forth and so on. So they use their camera as sort of like the main feature or the main headline of what you'll know from their phones. And again, these are the headline features that separate these things from each other. And it's what you're focusing on when you're coming up with your unique selling proposition. So as an example of this, I'll give you a few things that we've done with our band to, you know, fit this unique selling proposition. So one of the things that we've done in the past is we've hired impersonators to come perform with our band. So like a Michael Jackson impersonator. That's a unique selling proposition. So when we're going out trying to get clients, we say, oh, we have this Michael Jackson impersonator and they can come teach your crowd how to dance. They can do all the Michael Jackson moves and all of this kind of stuff. And people buy into that. They say, oh, okay, that may be something we want. And that's different from other bands that just show up and play music. We've hired Latin Spanish speaking singers to come in and do, you know, like a Latin portion of our show, just like a 30 minutes where they do, you know, five or six songs and they get the crowd up doing these, you know, sort of beady, beady, bum, bum songs, you know, Selena songs and get everybody on the dance floor and teach them some Latin dance moves and things like that. A unique selling proposition. We've even done things like hired a DJ to be with us on stage. And this is a thing that most musicians are, you know, kind of up in arms about. We usually fight with DJs. There's always some contention between bands and DJs, but we decided to close that gap. So we got a DJ on stage with us that was like mixing, that would mix some of our songs. So like when we go on break, smooth transition, they could do things, they could start playing songs. We could come in, you know, go out. They could come in and go out and all of these kind of things that it made for a wonderful performance. But that was a unique selling proposition. And it's allowed us to greatly raise our prices. And it's also allowed us to pitch these things to potential clients. Because again, when clients hear these things, oh my God, you have a Michael Jackson impersonator. Oh my God, you have a whole Latin section with your band. Oh my God, we gotta have you. So again, all you're doing in this unique selling proposition is determining a sort of headline overall thing that can be your main thing that your band is gonna be known for. 
Now, the next way you can determine your prices is sort of a more practical way, and that's simply to double your output costs. This is a really good and simple way to determine how much you should charge. So the formula to this is really simple. The first thing you do is determine a specific dollar amount per hour that you as an individual would need to live comfortably. As an example of this, let's just say $25 an hour. You need $25 an hour at a regular job, you know, 30, 40 hours a week to make a living and live comfortably. Now all you do is simply take your time output and multiply it by that 25. So how many hours do you practice per week? Let's say four hours. How much time do you usually spend talking to, emailing, and going back and forth with clients up until the event you're playing for them? Let's say that's about two hours. How many hours did your band rehearse for this event? And let's just say that's two hours. How many hours do you spend working on the day of the gig for that gig? So drive time to and from the gig, set up and sound check for the gig, the gig itself and the loadout. In a moderate to large city, you're generally talking about that's like a six to eight hour day. Now just with these hours alone and taking the low end of the six to eight hour a day and making it six, you're at about 14 hours. So you take that 14 and multiply it by that 25 that we talked about and you get 350. That's your output cost. That's how much you would get paid for what you actually did. So now what you do is you take that number and you double it. Now you're at $700. Now you do the same formula for each member of your band, you know, provided you're gonna pay everybody evenly and everybody gets paid that $700. And let's say you have six members in your band. Well, six times 700 is 4,200. So your prices should start at around 4,200 bucks. Now, I already hear you, you're thinking, oh my God, this is too much money and this, you know, this is unreasonable and stuff like this. But I'm telling you, this is the way that professional people and professional artists and bands price and pitch their services. And some of them go way beyond the things that I just mentioned here. And some bands charge upwards of 10, 12, $15,000 just to play for a wedding reception. And there's lots of other output costs that could be potentially added to this too. You know, like travel time out of town. You know, one of the things that we have with our band is, you know, anything within a three to four hour radius, you're talking about an extra 125 per person. You also may have output costs with things like having to rent a car or rent a trailer to bring your equipment out of town as well. So all of these things are output costs. But this is a really practical method to determine how much you should charge for events. And I'm telling you, it's a method that professional artists, professional bands, professional musicians use to determine what they're going to charge for events. So there was a lot of information shared in this video and what I want you to do is go back and watch it and watch it a few times. That way you can understand how to set your prices, how to pitch your prices, some of the best ways to come up with these things and some of the things that you can include in the unique selling proposition and the value proposition and all of that. Keep watching the video so that you understand those things. But the question is for you, what are some ways that you're using to determine and pitch your prices for your band and your services currently? jump down in the comment section and let me know. I definitely want to hear about those. And listen, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope that it's helpful for you in determining and pitching your prices. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on this video. And here are some other videos that you can check out right now.